call to arms has ever gone unheeded by a graduate of Bunker Hill Academy. In defense of our country and her principles, many of our brothers have nobly and selflessly made the ultimate sacrifice. To honor them, we will close this baccalaureate service as we close all services here by reading from the Book of Remembrance. This will be the last reading of the book for this year. Williams, Robert S., class of 60, play coup, taps, November 19, 1967. Yancey, Scott A., class of 45, Fork Chop Hill, taps, April 26, 1953. Young, Henry R., class of 38, Omaha Beach, taps, June 6, 1944. Youngman, Clarence M., Class of 64, Play Me, Taps, November 22nd, 1967. Zimmerman, James J., Class of 12, The Argonne, Taps, September 27, 1918. Homemade fudge, carrot cake, date duck bread. I'm hot on the trail of that sucker. And when I see him, I'll pick up some... Hey, shovel!
You know, the siege itself was almost as bad as the assaults, and the assaults were out of this world. They just kept coming at us wave after wave. Totally indifferent to casualties. Of course, the Chinese always had plenty of bodies to spare. They seem to be fascinated with uh, our Springfield 1903, the rifle our snipers used. They called it the weapon of the silent death. I wish I could remember that phrase in Chinese. Actually, it was rather beautiful. In battle, sir. How do you keep from being scared? <laughs> you don't. My God, was I scared. <laughs> I must have lost about 20 pounds, all of it brown. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, fear has a way of providing you with a little uh, bonus. It gives you the wolf. Wolf? It's a quotation from Theodore Roosevelt. Let me see. Um, all men who have felt the power of the joy of battle know what it's like when the wolf rises in the heart. He knew, and I know, that man was meant to be a warrior. We're all sons of our Viking fathers. Try to eat a little something, Mr. Muller, just to keep up appearances. Otherwise, I'll get an earache from Mrs. Malloy. It's delicious, sir. Right. I don't imagine I had much appetite when I was appointed cadet major. Thank God. Can't be 45 years ago. <laughs> Nobody's that old. Was it General Black the commander then, sir? General Black? Yes. Yes, General Black. We cadets used to say that his uh, name described his heart. But we respected the hell out of him, I can tell you that. He went the whole nine yards. It didn't matter whether it was war or growing roses or making men. You know that picture of him that hangs in the admin building? When I was a plebe, that used to scare me, just walking under that picture. That's why they hung it there. <laughs> well, the truth is, I think he would have loved him like a father. I know I did. Um, speaking of fathers, Mr. Moreland, um, is your dad still at uh, Fort Benning? No, sir. He's at Fort Polk now. Ah. Well... Yeah. Good top sergeant is worth his weight in gold. I know many a colonel who's had his ass saved by a clever sergeant. Excuse me. I'm sure he's very proud of your son. Hope he is. Oh, thank you. Um, my doctor allows me one of these a day. This is my third. I wish I could tell you that there are more old generals than old doctors, but I'm afraid it's not true. <laughs> Mr. Malloy, my office is not. We'll have coffee and uh, brandy in the study. Gentlemen. I'm afraid I can't uh, vouch for the vintage, but ultimately, it is the company that counts, isn't it? So, what shall we drink to? Hmm? I tell you what, let's drink to the one thing that never changes, to the one permanent part of a man's life. What's that, sir? Honor. Honor, indeed. Burglar proof, fool proof, weather proof, 100 proof honor. Everything else is subject to the uh, powers that be dependent upon the caprices of often inferior men. But your honor is your own inviolate. So then, to honor. To honor. To honor. Well, drink up. We have things to do. You know, Bunker Hill is rich in ceremony, but this is an occasion that I always like to keep rather private. And I say goodbye to one major and appoint another in his place. You know, the uh, cadet major is outright militarily only by me, so that makes it a position of some responsibility. You'll attest to that, won't you, Cooper? Yes, sir, I'm afraid I can. <laughs> Captain Morland, like your predecessor, you've distinguished yourself for a number of years here as an underclassman, and in recognition of your scholarship and leadership, your exemplary character, I take pleasure in conferring upon you the rank of Cadet Major, with all the responsibilities and privileges of that rank. Now, uh, they'll respect the rank, but God knows they won't respect the man unless he earns it. And uh, the loyalty of men is always hard-earned. I'll do my best, sir. I have every confidence in you. Thank you, sir. Congratulations, man. Don't make me look too bad in comparison. Don't worry. <laughs> John, if you do half as well in West Point as you've done here... You're going to make a splendid officer. Thank you, sir. The credit would go to you. Uh, if you gentlemen wouldn't mind accompanying me as far as the administration building, I have my <laughs> annual battle of the paper clips with the board of trustees. Yeah. 
Charlie had it, but listen, don't even ask me what we had for dinner. Can't remember. We had this. We had brand stuff that drank brandy so with the jet. Incredible. You didn't like brandy? That's beside the point. Can't stand it. <laughs> the beautiful room you were in. You deserve him as much as I do. No way, Jose. I'm half civilian and I'm on my mother's side. Even if I did get you through math, science, military true, true, science. Very true, very true. Did you get him? Whatever happened to good manners? I mean, the simple custom of not yeah. The gold. Jeez, I'd give my right net for those Oakleys. Does it major live at this address? <laughs> okay, oh, I touch him? Please, please, huh? Oh, man, I can't believe it. Don't cream on him, they'll tarnish. Listen, Wes, you should have been there. We talked about battles, battles that he's been in. Oh, shit. Drank brandy? No, shit. Toasted honor? Oh, man, brandy and everything. You can tell your grandchildren about it. Listen, we are going to have such a great year. It is going to be the best year yet. We are going to command the best regiment this school has ever seen. Damn well said. In honor of this auspicious occasion, Major Morley, your presence is requested in the hallway.
41 years, old soldiers like myself have stood here on this day and told the finest of America's young men the meaning of the word commencement. It is a beginning, we told them. But today, <clears throat> this day, it has another meaning, an end. An end to nearly a century and a half of tradition and an end to the heart of us. I have been informed that Bunker Hill Academy is to be closed. All of its buildings torn down, nothing to be left but memories. It is the decision of the Board of Trustees and all their wisdom that this institution be sold and the land developed for its real estate potential. In order to allow the incoming seniors to graduate and the underclassmen to seek enrollment elsewhere, the board has graciously extended the date of termination for one year. One year. I stand here today with you and look out over these young men. <clears throat> and of course, I am reminded of other commencement days and other young men, men of courage and conviction, men who have given everything in Mexico, in the great catastrophe of the Civil War, in Flanders and the Argonne, in the jungles of the Philippines, and on Omaha Beach, in the snows of Bastogne, in the Mekong Delta, and at the siege of Quezon. How then can others say this land is for sale? It has been purchased and paid for with the blood of our graduates. I am a veteran of many terrible battles, but no battle is more important than this one. And this final battle, I intend to win. We have a year. Entire wars have been won in less time. Men of the Corps, so long as breath and spirit remain, we must fight to preserve this academy so that the traditions that were born here may endure here. We must pledge ourselves to that mission. Come in. Sir, Major Moreland, sir, requesting permission to speak. Go ahead, Major. Sir, those of us staying summer session were wondering, uh, we wondered if... Stand at ease, Major. Sir, how can they do this? With a stroke of a pen, sir. Their field of honor was a desktop. They didn't uh, consult me, never even hinted at what their plans were. They just papered it and penciled it, and then they went ahead and did it, because that's what the numbers said. So all they want is money. Let them raise the tuition, we'll pay it. I'm afraid it's not quite that simple, son. There's a feeling on the outside that... Schools like this are anachronistic, that leaders of men like you and me are dinosaurs. Sir? Well, you go to the movies, you read books. 
A military leader is always portrayed as slightly insane. Very often more than slightly. It's because it is insane to cling to honor in a world where honor is held in contempt. Sir, I don't know if I really deserve the rank of major. My first thought was for myself. I didn't think about the others or the school. I... Sit down, Mr. Moore. Never be ashamed of being human. Without humanity, a leader becomes a tyrant. I was relieved, sir. I figured I had another year. I could graduate, go on to West Point. So you will. And the others, too. I haven't spent a lifetime fighting just to turn over and play dead now. No. I came to Bunker Hill when I was 12 years old. Just like you. With the exception of those 12 years, I've been in uniform all my life. I know men younger than myself who take their pensions and put on stupid little white shirts with cut-off sleeves, alligator on the tit, and spend the rest of their days beating the hell out of a little white ball with an iron club. My God. The thought of it makes me want to puke. They like it like that, civilians. Well, the one thing civilians know is their rights. And they're within their rights to push us out and make way for their goddamn condominiums. But we have one little advantage on them. What's that, sir? We're here. And the condos aren't. We have a foothold. You boys are my purpose. You're my family. And I'm not going to let them take you away from me. You won't either, sir. You won't let them. I did something like this to have a choice. I did. I figured that's what we had to the shit. I think it's my bus or something. You'll get a chance to shit on the next bus. So you didn't get hit by a bus, so what? Thanks, bro. You'll find me another bus for next year. Not any more for your shit, Dwyer, so stuff. Just trying to be friendly. Yeah. So, uh, what's more to say about all this? Mullen says it'll never happen. So Space will come in and save the day. Yeah, well, I think he's right. That makes two of you. So what do you think, Dwyer? I think your mother never gave you any toys when you were a baby. <laughs> Neither did Dwyer, so I had to play with his sisters. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, I feel like some big, fat, hairy head reached out inside of me and yanked something out. Can't sweat it west and ain't over. Oh, great, it's a waste to get our year. What could that Forget be? about that one year business, all right? Just forget about it. I mean, this place is going to be long after the pencil push has been going on. Uh, don't forget, we're here in the condo zone. We've got a foothold. Jesus Christ, that's a bug. Every boy needs a hero with a bug. It's Jim Morrison.
Sir, may I present Miss Laurie Cable? Laurie, this is General Bay, Chuck Commander. How do you do? I'm very pleased to meet you, sir. And uh, you, Dean Ferris, Miss Laurie Cable, guest of Major Cooper tonight. Well done, John. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Hello. Forgive me, I know that lovely face, but I forgot your name. Cindy Moore. Cindy, yes, Steve Cindy Moore. Thank you, Cindy Moore. It's touch and go there. All right, all right. Hello, Mr. Cooper. Hello, Mr. Cooper. So when will you get here? I'm all right. I wasn't part of anything. You know, that's okay. I can stay here. There'll be guys here. I said it's okay. I don't know what you expect me to say. I'm sorry I raised my voice. I just said I thought you'd be here. I'd rather stay here. Really. I love you too. 
Accident, sir. That's not for you to decide, and I don't care to discuss it. Look, I, I, I came to ask about the general. He's in intensive care. How is he? They say in the next 24 hours will be the critical stage. Well, the general's a strong man. He'll be all right. Well, I'm only telling you what they told me. You can ask for yourself. Well, I did. I called the hospital. They wouldn't let me talk to him. All right, then you know as much as I do. Well, who? Who's going to be in charge of the summer session? I'm not sure there'll be a summer session. What? Bye, Mr. Morton. Why doesn't the man use his phaser? He can't. How come? My brain's protected by an electromagnetic shield that's phaser proof. Have you seen this one before? I've seen all of them before. Hey, you're not supposed to be here. Hey, 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 Donald Andrews, 17, of Foxhaven, died late last night as a result of a gunshot wound inflicted oh, during a fight huh? between local boys and cadets. The shot was allegedly fired by General Harlan Beach, superintendent of the Bunker Hill Military Academy. In response to the tragedy, police have ordered all weapons on academy grounds to be confiscated. So what are we the supposed National to train? The National Guard has long maintained an armory on the school grounds, which cadets have used for training purposes. Meanwhile, General Bates lies in very critical condition at Valley Community Hospital, suffering from a heart attack which occurred immediately following the tragic events at the school. The school itself, which had planned to cease operations next June, has been ordered closed immediately by its proprietors. Here's today's closing figure. The lady said the proprietors ordered the school closed. Now, as I see it, we are the proprietors. So what does that mean to us? Get the door. All right, now listen up. Mr. Stewart. Yes? Captain Blyer, sir. Parker Hill Academy. Oh. Yes, sir. What can I do for you? Provisionally, sir. I heard they were closing the place. It's affirmative, sir. Mopping up the has to eat, though. It took 150 years to build the place. It's going to take some time to put a bed, as they say. Well, usually they want me to deliver the stuff myself. SOP undergoing change nowadays, sir, because of all the unpleasantness. SOP? Standard operating procedure, sir. Call the academy if you'd like some verification. I don't know. That's okay. Thank you, sir. Let's go. Come on, let's go move it. Oh, 
supposed to leave one. They're coming through the gate. Over. Command post leave one. Vehicle on the way. Over. Those racks? They were filled. What's going on here, Dean? Morland? Who is this boy? He's the ranking of dead. Morland. Do you have any explanation for this? My God, son, where are all the weapons? The weapons are secured, sir. What do you mean secured? You mean you stole them? No, sir. We confiscated them. I don't believe Dean, this. Where's the phone? There's one in the office near the entry. I'm afraid not, sir. We've cut the lines. Oh, my God. Listen, kid, if you don't turn those weapons over immediately, you're going to jail. Now, don't be an idiot. The right to bear arms is guaranteed in the Constitution, sir. You tell us where you put those weapons, and this will be the sorriest day of your life. All right, we have three demands. They're very reasonable. When they're met, we'll be happy to return every weapon, every shell. You say we. Who else? Number one. I want a meeting with General Lance. Okay, no, you stay with you are, sir. Number two. I want a commission to look into the selling of this academy to real estate interests. Number three. I want a meeting between my officers, myself, and the Board of Trustees to discuss alternatives to the closing of this academy. That's it. That's all we want. I'm 
crying. It's okay. You don't have to thank me. Shit. Yeah, you don't like to kick your ass from here to Albany. This guy's a moron. What's going on? This guy's a maniac, Brian. You grabbed the sheriff's right, car. What's the problem? The problem is this, this asshole just shot the town. Now, I didn't buy any of this to blow people away for Christ's sake. Here, Amy. We're not messing around with townies. They're sitting in jail or right here. All right, come on. Did you get the food? Sure did half of it anyway. All right, half is better than nothing. The guy's a maniac, Brian. He rammed the sheriff. Damn right. Saw my duty and I did it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sir. Get a few men escort the bus beyond the gate. We're going to let them go? Yeah, Hulk. We're soldiers. At least we're supposed to be. We're not going to take hostages. I want the officer of the administration to be in 15 minutes. All right, squad, let's move out and move the food. All right, let's move out. Move out. Move out. Trained to go spastic at the first sign of trouble. God damn, I'm glad the general didn't see that. These cadets will follow you only if they respect you. All right, sit down at ease. Okay, how we lose the truck? It stalled out. The townies at Dwyer and me in a hard place. And Sean grabbed the chance to use his shiny new weapon. We were in an explosive situation which jeopardized the entire mission. I simply defused the situation. That's just beautiful. I mean, you really have a way with words. He did get us out of it, Alex. Dwyer, you'd still be getting thrown around by those townies if he hadn't cut loose a few live rounds. Look, Alex, I don't like the idea of gunplay either, but the mission was successful and nobody got hurt. Well, that's my whole point. Now, I don't call what happened today a successful mission. Naturally. Look, we have to let people know we're serious. We just also have to let them know we don't want to hurt anyone. All right, look, what are we asking you? We're asking that the school be kept open. That's all. Other kids are vandalizing their school. We want ours to stay open. Now, if we behave like soldiers and not a bunch of kids in a riot, we can win this. Just got to be done by the book. Yeah, that's all I'm asking. It'll be done by the book. We stick together, we go the whole nine yards. Agreed? Agreed. Sound the general alarm. Out of this? Depends on base. 
I'm wondering about that heart attack. And what if General Beige never even had a heart attack? What if they're just keeping him from us? Why? Why would they do that? I don't know, to rattle us, make more of the whole thing than we ever wanted. Well, we never wanted any goddamn war. Yes, sir. Uh, send them in at uh, 930 hours. So what's your father? So what? Then there, everybody in this place has got a mother or father hanging around outside that gate. You don't. Yeah, well, I'm a hard case. Forget it. Look, at least your old man's got a nodding acquaintance with the real world. Hell, I like him. <laughs> Everybody likes my old man. <laughs> you do too, Brian. Admit it. That's why you're so scared. Nah, I ain't scared. Don't know if I like him. I'm still thinking about it. Yeah, well, don't rush into anything. <laughs> my mother died sitting in the hallway in the army hospital. And I was worried as hell because I knew she was real sick. She had this bad kidney thing. So I'm sitting there and my father comes out of the room and tells me that she's dead. He led me to this little chapel they had there in the hospital. He sat me down. He told me I could cry for 15 minutes. He gave me 15 minutes to cry and after that I wasn't supposed to cry again. So he... Left me alone in the chapel and came back. He came back 15 minutes later. She says, what'd you do? Well, I did what I was told. I cried for 15 minutes. She's a beautiful woman. My mother. Yeah, she was crazy about the old man. I don't know, I guess he loved her too. You never told me that story. 
Yeah, I was 12. That's when I came here. Brian. Hey, Brian. Uh, down at the gate. Uh, better get going. This is over. You and me are going to go round and round. Yeah. But first, you're going to move your goddamn arm. Hello, Brian. Hello, sir. You look like you might have grown an inch or two. So I had to come all the way up here, sir. Yeah. How you doing, Alex? Hello, Sergeant Moore. <laughs> the whole place looks a little different from when I was here last year. Bottom line. Hold your water. Bottom line. The truth is, Brian, these folks are worried about their kids. The poop out there is that some of them are being held in here against their will. Well, it's not true. Everyone in here is here because they want to be here. I don't believe it. Our son would not be involved in something like this. Lady, if my son can be involved in it, your son can be involved in it. Let's not get holier than that. Let us see our children and hear it from them. Yes. Ma'am, I can't call my soldiers away from their posts just to calm down their parents. I'm sorry. Oh my God, you're only children. They're going to try to add kidnapping to the rest of it, kid. You ought to know that. You want to see our kid. I'll try to arrange something. Well, good. Now we're getting somewhere. It'll be done under my term. I hope you're very proud of yourself, Sergeant Moreland. You have fathered a perfect son of a bitch. You people shut up. I can't think through all your static. You aren't in the Army, Sergeant. No apologies necessary. Just keep the hell quiet and let me take care of this. Inside the margins. I don't blame him, sir. It's a little hard to understand. You get in the habit? Oh, no, sir. No, thanks. Smart. Damn things will kill you. What am I going to tell those people outside? Sorry, sir. I never thought this would involve you. Let me tell them it was growing pains. The wrong execution of the right idea. The wrong execution of the right idea? Yeah. They'll understand that. Oh, Brian, all the men in our family have been soldiers. I know. Just plain old dog faces with a knack for surviving. I was hoping somebody along the line break into the brass case. I have my command, Dad. I don't think you're thinking straight. What you have here is a bad way to lose a pretty bright future, kid. Stop calling me kid. Do you expect me to call you Major? You can forget it. Look at this operation. You got all your strength nose to nose with the cops. I mean, eventually, even those bullhorn yo-yos are going to figure out you've got a vulnerable rear flank and they're going to sneak in there. Maybe over there. Over there, by the field, behind the cover of the trees, and they're just going to throw a net over your little pink asses. Yeah, you can say all that. Now, the first canister of tear gas it popped, half your troops will wet their pants and run like rabbits. Or for that matter, how bright was it to let this delegation in here? Huh? Look at me. Within five seconds, I could break your neck and you wouldn't be able to do a thing about it. You'd be shot. My next in command would take over. I read that book, too. On the other hand, we could take you all as hostages or prisoners. We won't. We have a code of honor here. Oh, sweet Jesus, a code of honor. Is that what this is all about? Somebody's lofty load of shit about honor? Yours? Yes, mine, and I learned it here. General Bache lives it. Bache? Are you kidding it? me? Bache is here because there's no place he like is the big example. We he all is the a bottom. joke. Fine, Bache has been passed over as many office. times. He, he's got a permanent stiff neck from the draft. I'll tell you about Bache. Bache is living proof that horses' asses outnumber horses. Tell him, so let's go back to the side. I'll tell you the big. Let's do the minimum quad. Yes, sir. We pulled together pretty well, haven't we? Yes, sir. General Bache would be proud of us. And if he were here, I know he'd tell us to hold out. To finish what we started, not to be halfway about anything. But outside, they're saying that some of you are being held against your will. But you really don't want to be here. Now, either they're right or we're right. Nobody's going to cut you down. If you honestly don't believe in what we're doing here, or if you're afraid of parents or the cops. So anybody who isn't 100% sure of why we're here and what we're doing, take one step forward.
Scares, do they, Charlie? No, sir. Me either, sir. They don't scare me. Good night, guys. Good night, sir. Charlie. I call Grace under pressure. Why not? Nero fiddled while Rome burned. That wasn't Grace. That was crazy. It all depends on your point of view, doesn't it? It's Peru. Meaning? Meaning maybe this is just as crazy. Alex, you've been picking at this thing from the beginning. I mean, what's wrong with you? Things are going beautifully. We're in better shape now than when we began. I mean, now we're a core. General Bates used to talk about men under pressure. How they act as one, come together. We're seeing it. Less big, same fish. He's only a man, Brian. Like your father, like my father. Just a man. Not every word out of his mouth is some holy nugget. Yeah, right. Whatever you say. Look, don't let that display of loyalty go to your head. It won't mean beans to anybody out there. They'll say it was first-rate brainwashing. Or maybe they're right. You know, I have expected you to be the one to break ranks. And for the comfort zone? The thought crossed my mind. Well, what stopped you? My sense of honor may be a little ragged around the edges, but I don't walk out on a friend. Yeah. See, you want to argue about this, we'll argue in the morning. Right. Get some sleep. All right, come wait till morning. Now, why do you think I'd put those black jackets anyway? I mean, is it lead or what? No, lead's too heavy, they wouldn't be able to move. Probably use some sort of super plastic. I've read that it's got something to do with the config configuration of the. You want to try and uh, spell that bonehead? <laughs> he couldn't even spell his own name. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what are you laughing at? Shut up. Hey, keep it down. Shit. Fort observation demand post. Convoy approaching. Looks like heavy stuff. FC squad cover the rooftops.
that comes over, under, or around the wall, sir. On whose orders? Captain Sean, sir. Carry on. Yes, sir. Uh, just a minute. Would you? Yes, sir. No problem, sir. Carry on. Yes, sir. Any contact? some word on the general. See how he's doing. I'll go on over the mess hall, guess, a part of my coffee. Yes, sir. Do you really expect them to negotiate with us? Can stand there forever. We'll hear from them. <laughs> I don't know, Brian. Things might escalate. Escalate how? Well, for one thing, Sean's Red Berets are really pumped up. There's a sentry out there ready to shoot to kill, for Christ's sake. Yeah, that's a sentry's job, Eddie. What good is he if he's not prepared to shoot? Well, maybe he's a little more than ready. And it's coming from Sean, Brian. I think he's running five little pep rallies out there for him or something. <laughs> A natural-born leader. Yeah, well, he's got me a little worried is all. He's too much into this. He's at a pitch, man. Come on, he's always been like that, Eddie. Hey, listen, after the Hulk, who would you want on your side if you were in a fight or something? Well, Sean. Right. But first, I'd want to talk my way out of the fight. Who wouldn't? Now, listen, nobody here wants to get killed. They know we're right. And they're not going to come in here shooting. Trust me, Eddie. Four men missing, sir. Whereabouts unknown. Charlie Company. Five men missing, sir. Bravo Company. All present accounted for, sir. Very well. Eleven. Goddamn scum. Hold it down. The next chill of Sean. Chanticles. I want a full report of the roommates of the 11 that are missing. And I want... You're the fellow who started all this. Major Moreland, sir, the ranking cadet. Yes. I understand you're quite a leader, Major Moreland. No, sir, we were all well trained here at Bunker Hill. That's part of why we won't give it up. I can understand that. Well, what's another hundred condominiums, Moreland? Condominiums are more easily built than leaders. Yes, exactly. Only, uh, you and I don't have the last word on that subject. No, sir, but I do have something to say about it. Mr. Moreland. You know, and I know, that it's never going to go your way. You do know that, don't you? You got something to tell me, Colonel? I'm telling you. Brian, I'm no fancy negotiator with a PhD in psychology. That's not what I do for a living. I'm the governor's muscle. I get called when he gets nervous. Don't try to scare us, Colonel. The police already tried that. I know. I know, and your parents didn't fare any better. But I've got to let you know what's going on out there. They don't see you guys as rebels with a good cause. They think you're homegrown terrorists, and quite frankly, it's got them scared shit. Nice American boys don't act like this. We have a home here, something we think is worth defending. I mean, why is that so tough to understand? You're and you have the right to defend it in all the accepted ways. Hell, I'll help you. But you can't start by stealing government property. 
All right, well, I'm sorry about that, sir, but I've seen what happens when you go the other way. Now, by the time we got up to bat, the game'd be over. At least you would all be alive, which at this point is all I give a damn about. Don't worry about us. How many kids do you have here? Come on, for Christ's sake. It's not classified information. A hundred. hundred and fifteen. I've seen ten create one hell of a fearful momentum. And you have over a hundred here with weapons. And then you have some of them who really don't want to be here. You I'm saw not the muster yesterday. They had a chance to leave. They stayed. Eleven kids already did leave. Sounds to me, sir, like eleven boys that weren't much good to us anyway. I don't care what happened here. I just don't want to see scared kids crawling over the wall in the middle of the night. You won't. Escort the colonel back to the gate. Yes, sir. You don't have a whole lot of time, Brian. Colonel Kirby, sir. As you were, soldier. Jesus Christ. Soggy or stale. It's good training for young Captain Mr. Pierce. Those guys are probably sending out for pizza. Weekend warriors. One big difference between those guys and us. Those guys are used to shooting at people. Are you kidding? On a Monday morning, these guys don't know a muzzle from a rat's ass. Yeah, we could find a witness to say different. Yeah, but they couldn't shoot back. Captain okay, Sean. Yes, sir. Call the court information. Everyone? Yes, everyone. Sir. it would be done by the book. A military operation. Now, someday we'll be respected for what we've done. Now, last night, 11 cadets jumped the wall. And today, they're saying, outside, that the rescue must be hostages. Now, gentlemen, a decision has to be made and it has to stick. We can't tolerate any more desertions. We don't have the guts for what we've taken on. We walk out now in the light of day. You're as committed as I am. Stay. And we'll win this battle. We'll win it with honor. Otherwise, step forward, lay down your weapons, walk out. Permission to be dismissed, sir. Brian. Hello, Brian. Dismissed.
underestimate those damn tapes. Little kids I can understand. Hulk was always marginal, but Wes. It was a big mistake, Brian. Even if you don't want me saying so. Maybe she would have never played it that way. Mm, I wish I could talk to him. He tells to hold out. I know what. Go grab some sleep. Come on. Sleep. Can you sleep? Me? Sleep like a baby this afternoon, two whole hours. Go on, lie down, Brian. You'll feel better. Wait me some amps. Will do. Piss off the major, and you find yourself escorted out just like the major's father. Feed my father out of this. Reason with the major. Let's go. Oh, clear it out. Pretty soon there's going to be nobody back. left. Move it back. Move it back. I want to piss off major. Knock it off. All right, we've had enough. You don't want to save this school for posterity. You want to wear it like your own private cocoon, just you and beige. Snug as two bugs, queer for each other. <laughs>
Hey, give me a wire brush, Charlie. Damn thing looks like it hasn't been run since World War I. Yeah, it's in. Okay, that ought to do it. Hold your breath. All right, hit the switch. Got it. No, you're responsible for that, boy. It was an accident. I've gone to the mat with the civil authorities for you. I'm urging them to take into consideration your youth and the strain that you've been under. Oh, cut the been... bullshit. Nobody in here is young anymore. Excuse me if I don't shed any tears over your lost youth. You've had your chances to toss it in. You've got this chance. The governor is this close to ordering us to take you in by force. Now, when that order comes, I'll do it. And you won't ever be that unhappy again. I'll have to do it. Sure, I know what they want us to do. They want us to be good little boys now so we can fight some more for them in the future. Some more they'll decide on. But we'd rather fight our own war right now. For God's sake, Brian, we're talking about boys so young they haven't got hair one between their legs. There's never been any qualification for a soldier. Good Christ. The final stage of any mobilization is the children. The seed corn. What in God's name did they teach you in here? What did they turn you into? A soldier, which is the only thing I ever wanted to be. A soldier? No, goddammit, I'm a soldier. With the career goal of all soldiers, I want to stay alive in situations where it ain't all that easy to do. But you, my friend, you're a death lover. Well, I know the species. Seventeen years old and some son of a bitch has put you in love with death. Somebody sold you on the idea that dying for a cause is oh so romantic. Well, that is the worst kind of all the kinds of bullshit there is. Dying is only one thing. Bad. Don't find that out. Please. We'll reduce our demands to just one. I'm listening. Meeting with General Beige. If the order come directly from him, we'll obey. General Beige died last night at six o'clock.
salvation. <clears throat> Prize this sword. It's given to him by General MacArthur in appreciation of his service. And he used to say he was forged in the furnace of honor. What I know of honor, I learned from him. And what I know of dignity, I learned from him. He taught us there are things worse than death. General Beish, we commit your spirit to eternity. To the company of great soldiers. And great souls. Just to keep us wondering. It's Someone finally had to die. Kirby, hold on. 
Listen right there. You will talk to our men through us. I want all of you boys to know that at dawn we will take this campus. My men, our tanks, our helicopters, we will take this campus. I don't want to see any more of you boys die. Men, stand fast and listen up. Remember, you are soldiers. You will continue to follow the orders of your superior officers. You will Those continue... Those of you who don't want this to happen to you, at dawn, throw down your weapons and run to the nearest National Guardsman. Now, we will do our best to protect you and to see that you get out safely. Like they did Charlie. The bastards killed them! States of America with distinction since before the Civil War. At Bunker Hill, our goal is not only to educate the boy, it is to develop the man, to plumb potential, to nurture it in an atmosphere of strict discipline and intensive training. Those boys who are dedicated often find acceptance to West Point, Annapolis, or the Air Force Academy, where thinking about Charlie. You know, he came in here, scared of his own shadow, homesick. He used to cry himself to sleep. I was, I was betting he wouldn't last the first week of orientation. He'd call right face and he'd go in the other direction. And by Thanksgiving, he was calling the cadence. Never got a hit in inspection. I mean, he, he turned out to be a tough little kid. Always so eager to please. close to dawn. With that plebe here, it's a tough time. Yeah, it is. Some of them, like John, thrive. I did. I, I thrived on it. Can't remember why anymore. Honor, 
duty, country. I love that man. Being in his presence made me feel privileged. There had to be something missing, you know, all that he taught us. <laughs> This wouldn't have happened. I, I've done it. justification but honor honor doesn't count for shit when you're looking at a dead little boy you don't think of babes in the book of remembrances or bugles or flags or 21 gun salutes all you think about is what a neat little kitty was now you're gonna miss him Yes, sir. Fall in. Fall in the quad. It's over. 